This is uh, Morten from Inkish TV. Um, here at Honkla Innovation Days, we have seen a lot of inkjet presses, of course. And uh, one of the things that uh, stroked me a little bit when I was thinking about it is that we all talk about speed, we all talk about the quality, we all talk about stops, substrates. And I wanted to ask a few of the people that know something about this, how much the curing, uh, curing and drying process influences the speed and how important uh, to have treated or uh, pre-treated or in machine treated paper or inks that uh, goes with it. And now I'm talking to Yale from HP Page White in San Diego. Yeah, great to see you, Yale. Great to see you, Morton. Thank you for having me. You're always welcome. Um, do you get my, my, when I say that I have, I wouldn't say concerns, but when I have these considerations, because I mean, if you look at also HP, you have moved uh, with, uh, from the T2 series to now the 2200 series. Machines get faster. Uh, it gets with a brilliant ink, higher quality, but it also seems that you need more drying capacity if you want to take the full advantage of the machine, right? So I was just wondering, if you look at the, uh, let's start with the curing side, how important is that in order to achieve the highest qualities? Yeah, well, certainly, Morton, what we see where the industry is going and evolving is around higher coverage, coated stocks, uh, and uh, the higher quality, higher value kind of work. Mm -hmm. And so when we look at the T200, which is our press we initiate, we brought to market uh, a while ago, mm -hmm. uh, that has very great capabilities, serves a lot of, of needs. And as customers want to go faster, be more productive with machines, we said we need to add more drawing mm -hmm. capability to the platform. And so that's how we developed with the Advantage 2200 press that has multiple drawing capability to really meet the needs of, of customers. Mm. But the reason I'm asking is also because before you, you released the 2200, of course you br brought to market the, the, the brilliant thing on the 250 and as upgrade kits for the 245 as well. Uh, I was just wondering because, I mean, one of the, let's say, secret sources in, uh, in high quality printing on inkjet before was that you needed to have pre-treated paper in order to achieve better in coverage. So where is the combination? Is it the heating or is it the treatment that is the most important thing? Oh, I think it's all of a system. It all has to, to work together from how you get the, the, the files into the, the press, process them to be printed onto the, the page and then uh, the paper that you're using and then the, the drying of the, the ink as it goes through the, uh, the system. And so I think it's what we want to do with HP is provide a lot of options for customers. And so with a brilliant ink, it prints very wide uh, color gamut, very uh, deep reds and blues and right, really uh, nice uh, colors. And it, uh, and it has an optimizer that comes with it, which is printed selectively underneath the, the ink. So I, I see it as a um, really like a secret sauce for our, our customers. So, so what you say is basically the approach to how HP is solving uh, the media diversity is basically that you have uh, single drops of some kind of pre-treatment on the paper, but only the places where you print, and that is part of the printing process now. That's part of the printing process, and for HP, it's always been part of the printing process. We have, uh, when we started originally with a bonding agent that was a processed and treated, printed onto the, the page, and now uh, we have an optimizer that uses that function. Now it's, the optimizer allows customers to print on uncoated or coated papers uh, with, uh, with that same press. Mm -hmm. and, um, and you also had asked this question before around, well, do you use inkjet treated optimized papers? And so with our press, we can print on any kind of paper, whether it's uh, offset papers, uncoated, coated, uh, or uh, and those would be using the the bonding or the optimizer, mm. and uh, and you could also use a uh, inkjet treated stock, in which case you would not need to use the the optimizer. So that is a function you turn on off based on what paper you put into the machine. Yes, and you can also change the level of the optimizer that's used. Mm. So the level is basic because I mean, of course, it has a price to use the the, the bonding agent. So basically, if you don't need it, you save the money, and if you need it, you can turn up and down. 
depending on the output you need, basically. Right, and it gives you flexibility because there's a lot of stock changes that are happening right now in the industry, and since uh, many people don't have control over that stock, yeah, yeah. Uh, it gives you the option to print on different kinds of paper to run a, uh, set it up for your press, and you're off and going. Mm. And we have customers who are doing that. Yeah, and I was thinking also that if you look at a machine like the, the 2200 in particular, because I mean, with I think that when the T200 was, it was like really a brilliant machine for book printing. It was a brilliant for transactional, transpromo, these kind of things. But with the uh, brilliant ink, the 250, and also now with the 2200 with the, uh, uh, additional drying capacities, um, I was thinking that now it is the time where you move print more and more into the let's say traditional commercial space with high ink coverage and all these kinds of things. So this is simply also because then it will be too expensive to use to buy pre-treated paper. You can basically just use whatever you have in your machine. Is that a, a, a correct summary or? Yeah, I think what we're saying is we're giving options to our customers. They can run on standard offset papers. Mm -hmm. And I, I think to your point, yes, moving more into these higher coverage, commercial kind of print, direct mail, mm -hmm. Uh, pieces, even uh, high coverage uh, books, publishing uh, pieces, all have they have a lot of ink on them. Uh, I think just from what you had said around the coated uh, inkjet papers, well, and they don't need to use an optimizer. Then there's a little bit less yes. uh, ink or water that's uh, put onto the paper, so it's uh, a little less drying, a little more can be more energy efficient. And and with the 2200, you have also added a, a monochrome mode that is really, really fast. Is that because you anticipate that in monochrome, the ink coverage obviously is uh, is uh, less, and therefore you can just give it full speed, or? Yeah, that, yes, that is the, uh, uh, the case. I There's mean, a lot of mono work out there, yeah. a lot of mono work that's text, yeah. it's not very high coverage. Because I was just thinking 244 meters per minute is like, that's a really uh, fast machine in the market, right? And I think uh, I have been visiting a lot of your customers printing books, and you know, the faster the better, right? <laughs> The faster the better, yeah. <laughs> right, because time is money. <laughs> time is money, that's true. So, um, uh, last question here is that, when, because the reason why I wanted to ask you these questions is just because I'm trying to understand, I mean, think of this for a second. If you are, let, let's say that you are operating in an offset world today, and you want to move into inkjet, for example, some of the concerns you could have is, of course, the media diversity. Some of the concerns you might have is that how fast can you actually deliver your output when you have a machine like this. And therefore, I wanted to understand you know, the, the treatment, the, the drying process in order to that. But it sounds to me like also you have some samples here, right? It seems, it seems to me that the, 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 the densities and the colors you can now print with the 2200 is absolutely not an issue when it comes to those kind of considerations, right? Right, absolutely. The press is designed uh, to run this kind of work at high speed. So the piece that you're looking at there, that's a uh, uh, 130, 150 GSM uh, self mailer, and that uh, piece runs on the press at over 50,000 uh, pieces an hour. The other one that's- That's in, just amazing speed, right? Uh, crazy, and then let's talk about this postcard here. And zero setup time. <laughs> right, it's a 14 point stock, it's a 300 GSM, that's running uh, over 80,000 an hour on the press the real productivity for our customers. And then what we announced at the show here is that the highest quality mode on the machine can now run at that same speed for that piece, like 80,000 pieces an hour. Must be a good uh, show to show off these things too, right? It's very exciting. Fantastic. Yale, thank you very much. Thank you, Morton.